Okay, I wanted to do a video showing the beginner how to sew a jeans hem. And oftentimes I get a lot of questions from people saying that they've tried sewing on their needle breaks, they're having trouble, various problems, and usually it has to do with a side seam. But let me go through the fundamentals first, uh, some of the most important things. Needle and thread are critical. Um, this is a Guterman uh, jeans thread, and the color number is 1870, so it's 1870. You can find this online. It's called a jeans top stitch thread. It's considered a heavy duty thread for the home machines. Um, I'd consider it a, a medium duty for an industrial machine, but anyway, this is a good option for getting the uh, seams and the hems to look the way you want them to, get on them to match the retail jean color that you want. There are two colors in this. Um, I'd order both of them, and one of them is a little bit more orange uh, than this one is, and it may match your jeans better. It depends on what you're looking for. So anyway, that's the kind of thread that you want. It's 100% polyester, and um, it's considered a heavy weight for the home machines. Next is your needle. Uh, let me go through the various needles here. Uh, this is a Smets needle. You can find this. I've seen it in the uh, Joanne stores, even the Walmart stores that have uh, a sewing section. I know some do and some don't, but anyway, if you happen to have one that does, you may be able to find these needles there. The difference between these two, this one has two size 14, two size 16, and one size 18 needle. This is a good option to start with because it'll give you some, some choices to figure out what works best on your machine. This one is a size 16 only, so all those needles are size 16. The reason I have this is I find that I, on my machine, size 16 works 99.9% .9 of the time. And so <clears throat> I've got both of these just in case a 14 will work. Uh, you can see I've got 14 on a couple of machines and a 16 on another one that's not in here. Uh, but anyway, it gives me some options. It'll allow you to test to see what works best on your machine with your thread. And <clears throat> let me show you some other ones here. This is... Let me see. This is the Singer size 16. Singers come in one size per pack. There'll be a 14, 16, or an 18. That's a size 16 needle and Singer. I uh, wanted to show you this so you don't get confused. This is a size 18, but it's a universal heavy duty needle. It's different than a denim needle. A denim needle has a different head on it. It actually is shaped to pierce the denim. Um, it's a little bit sharper than what a universal needle is. If this is your only choice, it may work, it may not. Um, you'd have to try it on your machine in your situation. Uh, but anyway, just don't get confused if you see a size 18 and think that it's automatically a denim needle. It needs to say denim on it or jeans. Um, <clears throat> for example, um, this is the Dritz needle. It only came in a size 16. There's only three of them in here, but it says jeans needle. Uh, so it's denim slash jeans, but you can look for either one of those phrases and that'll give you what you need. This I picked up at a Viking Center in a Joanne store, and these are all size 18 needles. And so that was to counter uh, my supply of all 16 needles. So that way I've got a packet of all 18, size 18 needles if I need them also. So in this particular case, I couldn't find any size 18 in Dritz, but I found these size 18, so I picked them up just to have them. So that'll show you the needles you need, that shows you the thread you need, and uh, let's move on and uh, get our jeans together and uh, go ahead and get, the, uh, get them cut. Uh, what you'll want to do is mark them. You'll mark a chalk line where you're going to hem it, and then you'll come back and measure your retail jean, the size here and basically double it because you're going to fold it under twice and I'll go through that in the next segment. Okay, we've got our jeans cut and 
When you're going to hem your jeans, you're going to do a double fold. So there's your raw edge, fold it under once, fold it under twice. If you've marked your jeans, this would be your chalk line for the hem. And you want to extend it, if you have two 5 8 inch rolls, uh, you know, extend it two times 5 8 That'll give you a chance to roll it under and uh, you'll have your hem just the way it is from the retail store. Okay. One of the things to note when you're hemming jeans, you've got the inside and the outside seam. The inside seam is a double filled hem and that means that you're going to be going through more layers of fabric on the inside seam, which is where you're going to start, than you do on the outside seam, which is nothing more than a surged edge. And so this is going to be a little bit easier to go over than the beginning uh, seam is. So we're going to start anytime we hem on the inside uh, seam and that's where we'll come back and, and actually sew over a couple of stitches at the end to get it tied off. And one of the things I've noticed on the retail jeans, and I guess we'll go ahead and do it on this one, is uh, we can start a little bit before the side seam and that'll let me show you how to get up over the side seam, the big bulky one, and some of the tools to use. Um, here are a couple of tools to use. Um, some sewing machines come with these. Uh, they're button attachments and they can be used uh, to help keep the foot level when you're hemming jeans. Another device that's nice is called a Genomajig and that's literally the name of it. And one of the things I like about this device, it's made for hemming jeans. You've got a nice long groove here for the needle to go through. So when you're going on the back, my finger being the needle, you can really push it up and let it sew until it's off of it without moving it. And on the front side, the same thing. You can put your needle up here and get it up under there good and then sew until it comes off. So it allows a little bit more room um, than say these devices do, uh, just a little bit more and that little bit can help sometimes. So these aren't very expensive and you can actually get them in uh, three different thicknesses. Um, so uh, I'll try to post a link um, in the uh, description of this video showing you how to get these in three different thicknesses. Okay. The other thing is a piece of scrap fabric can be used to put it under the foot and you can fold it to get it thicker if the uh, seam is thicker because this fabric will actually compress when you get it under the foot so you can just find a piece of scrap fabric um, just something that's thicker like this that I've sewed together I can take it and I can roll it up to get it to the thickness that I want to get it under the foot and achieve what I want so uh, just any of that stuff will work uh, the main thing we want to do is when you're going over those seams is get this foot level. That'll give you a good stitch without stip, uh, skipping a stitch and it'll prevent you from breaking a needle. So, Alright, uh, let's move on to the next segment where we actually get it set up to sew the jeans. Okay, we've got our jeans here and we're ready to hem. Um, I've got two magnetic guides set up here and what I do is I turn the seam under and I get it close to the edge. Uh, by moving the magnets around and I line it where I want to line it. Uh, one of the things I've learned through hemming a lot of jeans is when you get this lined up, don't get it real close to the edge. Bring it in to about right there and then it'll move over just a little bit once you turn over and start hemming your jeans. So don't get it too close to the edge and uh, you'll be fine. Okay, we're going to start on the inside seam. The difference, the way you find the inside seam, this outside seam is surged. That side seam is always thinner than the inside seam that has a flat felt seam, which gives us additional uh, layers of fabric to sew through. So we're going to start close to the inside seam, since that's the one least seen. It's less visible to the public as we sew around. So we'll find our inside seam, verify that that is it and put it on the machine and we're going to start just before the side seam here 
that way when we come back over we'll be able to cover our original starting stitches which will lock them in place. Let me get enough of my thread tails here where I can grab a hold of them. Alright. Okay, the foot is down. I'm going to manually turn the hand wheel through this process. And the reason I do that is it gives you more control over the side seam. If you step on the pedal and try to go over it, the feed dogs will kind of jiggle the fabric around and you'll end up with an inconsistent stitch. It may even skip a stitch or break a needle on one of these home machines. So I'm going to hold the thread tails. I'm going to start stitching. And as soon as I get up to the side seam, which I'm there now, I'm going to go ahead and let it penetrate and I'm going to bring this little piece of fabric around to the back of the foot and use it to keep the foot level as I go through the side seam. So just stick it under there and do a few stitches and when you see that it starts coming out or becoming unlevel, you'll want to insert it in there but it, it should stay until you get to the other side and you need to move your fabric around to the front side. So we'll move it around to the front side. Now you have to be careful of what you put in the front as it's advancing that it doesn't advance of a needle and you sew into it. So just keep your eye on it. I'll move it back a little bit, lower the foot again. Go ahead and do another stitch. Lower the foot again. Raise it and lower it. Get my fabric underneath it. going to do this process until the back of the foot is no longer being raised up by that seam. and it's off now. So once it's off we can start sewing. We just want to make sure we get a good even stitch there across that big thick seam. And when you're sewing these jeans on these home machines uh, don't go too fast. Uh, it'll skip a stitch or uh, something so just go good and slow. Okay, I'm coming up on the other side seam. Uh, this seam is not as thick and generally you can go right over it but just go slowly and what I'll do is once I get up there I'll turn the hand wheel just barely press on the foot to help it along but I want to go slow and make sure I don't skip any stitches or have any problems here. And this one's not nearly as thick as the uh, the side seam on the inside is and so you can generally get over it. If you have any problems use the same technique that I showed when we started and once we get past it go one more and we should be completely past it then we can go. Stop with your needle down. I'm going to cut my two threads up here at the beginning because we're going to sew right over those and lock them in. And here we go. Okay, I'm coming up on my starting point. And what I want to make sure of is right before I get there, I'm going to turn the hand well. I want to make sure my stitches line up perfectly with where I started. So I'll get that seam just right in the middle of that presser foot and that will tell me that I'm going to sew over my previous stitches and lock them in place. Okay, I've hit the side seam. Now I'm going to hit the reverse button and I'm going to sew two stitches backwards. I want to 
make sure I stay in that same seam and bring it up and I am finished. So let's raise our pressure foot and cut our threads. And see what we get. <clears throat> okay. Let's see if I can wind everything. There's our starting and stopping point, so you'll see the stitches locked there. Um, as we go around on the bottom side, everything looks good. Our top stitching across there looks nice and even. Everything. Here's our second side seam. Everything looks nice and even. It's because we took our time and went over it. We don't have any skip stitches. And the other thing you want to look for for tension reasons is to make sure you're not seeing any loops of the top thread on the bottom or on the top. You're not seeing any of the uh, loops of the bottom thread up there. Uh, we want those to pull together into the fabric where we have a good strong stitch. Okay, that's it. That kind of shows you how to get around on a just an entry-level home sewing machine. Just make sure you have a size 16 or possibly 18 needle. Some of these home machines struggle with a size 18 needle. So I'd say try a size 16. Uh, generally that works 99% of the time. And uh, I think you'll be fine. So uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'll be happy to try to help you out.